welcome. My name is Jamie and I'm the Circulation Coordinator at the Elgin Public Library here in Elgin, Texas. We're excited to welcome you to our bilingual video series on early literacy called Read to Me or Le Conmigo, which we are fortunate to provide to the citizens of Elgin and the surrounding communities thanks to a generous grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services and the Texas State Library and Archives Commission. Evening, I hope you're doing well. Happy New Year. <laughs> Can we still say Happy New Year now? <laughs> Feliz Año. Um, so welcome to those of you that have not come, but I, we love to have uh, uh, new participants. That uh, way we can build more community here at this wonderful Elgin Library project. Um, so today or tonight, we're gonna do a couple of things. And so the emphasis on these workshops really has been on how do you get children prepared for kindergarten? What do you do? What, how can you help them with? We know that teachers have very high expectations, but also we see it that's good. Teachers should have uh, high expectations. But at the same time, we know that we live in a state where standards are very important, right? <laughs> I love the face you made about the standards. And so there are many different things that we can do as parents, you know, such as express our opinion about, you know, standards and appropriateness for young children. And in the meantime, we can be helping our children at the same time to see, well, how do, how do I prepare them? So one of the things just kind of uh, to, to review that we did is that we created this very simple handout and it's called Essential Skills for Kindergarten. Lo que hicimos para cuando estuvimos hablando acerca de cómo preparamos los, a los niños para el jardín de niños o el kinder, dijimos que hay ciertas habilidades que ellos tienen que tener. And so we developed this handout based on what a kindergarten teacher from here, from Elgin, and I have no idea who she is, but uh, Jamie shared that information, what she likes to see children, how she likes to see children prepared when they go to her kindergarten classroom. So if you take a look at that, what are some of the things that you see? Cuando ves este folleto, ¿cuáles son algunas de las cosas que la maestra está diciendo que los niños tienen que saber? And I'm doing it English and Spanish, so that way our uh, Spanish-speaking uh, community members can understand as well. What are some of the things? ¿Cuáles son algunas de las cosas? And y'all can just, y'all can read it, y'all can share it. <laughs> write their name, okay? So if they write their name, what do they need to know what to, what to do? Write letters, okay. The alphabet, what else? How to hold a pencil, right? Or a crayon. They need to know, okay, where, where can I get a paper? Can I just write on any paper? <laughs> uh, ho, ho. <laughs> I have a, now he's 17 years old. He, my son Rodrigo has autism. And when he was little, he would write anywhere and everywhere. He loved writing the walls, the floor, <laughs> everywhere. It's an experience that gives joy to children, whether they have a special need or not. But they need to know that there are certain materials that are important. They need to know how to use them. So interestingly enough, the teacher says, they need to know how to use those materials appropriately. They need to know what those materials are for. So, tienen que saber para qué son los útiles escolares y cómo los utilizamos. And so in this list, and we went through it um, previously, it gives you an idea as to what is it that I, as a parent, what do I need to do to be able to help my child to at least have the first day of kindergarten <laughs> be just as successful. And so there's reading and writing, but there's also math, right? And 
something that we call social emotional. Tenemos lectura, escritura, tenemos matemáticas, pero también destrezas socioemocionales. And those social emotional skills are the ones that sometimes get our kids, right? Why do you think that is? ¿Por qué piensan que esas destrezas socioemocionales son las que tienen un poquito más dificultad los niños? So why do you think that is? Maybe go back to your kindergarten years. <laughs> Our own house, may, the rules, may, may, we may not have rules, right? Or maybe they're different than the ones that they're expected to have in school. Okay, what, what else? Good, yeah, that's a good point. What else, why, why do you think? <laughs> Exactly. And so then you have a classroom full of 20 and 22 and five-year-olds and they all come with all different skills. They all come with different values. They all come with different needs and wants. And so the, it's the teacher's job to structure the classroom so that way everyone can have a positive experience. And so we need to support the teacher, right? Tenemos que apoyar a la maestra. And how do we do that? Well, there's some, so if, let me backtrack a little bit. So on this handout, you're going to see some of the things that teachers expect. So play with others, communicate, follow directions and problem solve. Even though they seem, those skills seem very simple, they're very complex for a five-year-old. Hey, they're complex for us, right? <laughs> How do I problem solve? How do I do this? How do I follow directions? Las destrezas socioemocionales que tenemos escritas aquí son difíciles para los niños, son difíciles para los adultos también. Entonces, nosotros como padres les tenemos que enseñar a nuestros niños qué es lo que, cómo es que se tienen que comportar. So, as parents, we need to share with our children, how, what are some of those things that they need to do in order to be successful besides the academics? And we're gonna get, in order for children to be successful academically, they need to be successful socio-emotionally. So you have a handout, tienes uh, un folleto, and it's titled Sharing. They don't even know what sharing means when they're little tiny babies, right? It takes a while for them and you know, to, to learn what sharing is. And yet, kindergarten children are expected to share the minute that they walk into the classroom. And so that's difficult to do, right? And so if you look at the first paragraph that I have, it says, in kindergarten, children will be expected to take care and manage classroom materials, including sharing them. They need self-regulation to be able to accomplish this. So the teachers are saying, we need for them to know how to use uh, materials properly. They need to be cleaning up and putting things away. They need to be sharing, right? They need to be putting away belongings, and they need to be playing with others and taking turns. That's a lot to ask of young children. That's a lot. But guess what? They have to learn how to do it. But as children develop, they learn how to do this. They learn how to share these responsibilities, and they learn how to share toys with others, how to share space with others. And this occurs through self-regulation. So when we have infants, and they cry. When they're crying, they're letting us know that they need something, right? Whether they're hungry or thirsty or they're wet or they just want to be held. There's just different things that they want. As they get older, children learn to communicate their needs and wants in different ways. How many of you or your children 
when they were infants and you wouldn't answer their needs right away, they would cry even louder. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if they did or they didn't. I know mine did. And it had, especially my older daughter, now she's 18 and she still cries like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't tell her, Angelica. <laughs> Angelica no. um, I remember when she was an infant, she would cry and turn red because she wanted her bottle right there. I'm warming it up or I'm doing, no, ah! As she got older, she had to learn to soothe herself, right? To wait. We have to learn to wait. And then as she grew older, so when she was a toddler, still, you know, all over the place, running around, give me what I want. If I don't get it, I'm gonna, but I could, you know, my husband and I could guide her, right? Into finding ways to relax a little, to wait, not too long, because they can't, they're only two. But they're learning, so if they take those baby steps that we talk about, to be able to get there. Still, children, when they're three and four years old, they still have a hard time. And the reason for that is because they're very egocentric. Everything is about them. Some of us as adults, everything is about us still. But they learn, they learn some coping mechanisms, some ways to say, oh, okay, right now is my turn. It's not my turn, next is gonna be my turn. And so they begin to understand those very abstract concepts, okay? So then the self-regulation begins to occur, the ability to control your behavior, right? So if I were to ask somebody again, oh look, I have uh, the, the purse right there. May I have your purse? <laughs> no, ma'am. I can get very upset and say, but I want that purse. Or I can say, okay, well maybe later, right? But if I'm three or four, I may want it really, really bad and I may just go and grab it, right? How many of you have seen your own children do that? I've seen, you know, children do all kinds of things and they go and they grab it. What is the adult's response to that? Anger, no, that's not yours. Right? What else? What, how else can you react? The, the adult or the child? The child came to the what? The adult, fearful? Exactly. Uh, what else? How else can, can uh, an adult react? Because it's really how we react, right? We're teaching that child that it's not okay to take somebody's property, right? Somebody belonging. Oh, I've seen people that just ignore it. That's another, that's another way, right? That people ignore. And so what, how does that make you feel? Who am I? Am I? Your, your, so when you see somebody just ignoring okay. what a child did, they, somebody the grabbed, and you're the observer. Uh -huh. Then I'm, I'm worried about the child's future. You start thinking, oh boy, you know, how is he or she going to be able to cope with this, right? Especially when they go to school. So when they go to school, if we go back to this, and they're expected to play with others, to communicate, to follow instructions, and to solve problems, the child is gonna have a hard time. Um, when my youngest son was getting ready to go to kindergarten, we went and we bought school supplies and he was excited because he was gonna go to his sister's school. So he was like all ready to go. Well, he gets to his classroom and, the, and this was just the orientation. It wasn't like the first day of school. And the teacher says, oh, just put all materials here. I'm gonna put them all together. I, no, no, no. <laughs> his eyes open and he would not let go of those bags. He's like, they're mine, they're mine, my mine. And so he didn't want to share. He had two si older siblings and he was the youngest and he's seven years apart from um, my oldest. And so he's really, truly the baby. But he was very young and he still, you know, he didn't want to share. 
it's a skill that we have to teach them, right? That is, he, you can't hold it. It's okay to let it go. And it's okay that he's going to cry. And we're going to have to find ways to teach them how to do that. And so um, when you look at this handout where it says sharing, a child is able to show self-regulation when he or she is aware of that feeling of anger or frustration. So when somebody really, really wants something and is frustrated and they're aware of it, they have to find ways to calm down, right? When they don't calm down, that's the problem. Entonces, cuando los niños saben cómo controlar esa frustración o el sentimiento de enojo, entonces ellos saben que ese sentimiento no es bueno. So those feelings, once the child is aware of those feelings, they're going to be able to control them. But if they don't know that those feelings are not so positive, right? I mean, we all get upset, we all get frustrated, but when you're always upset and always frustrated, then that's not something good. A child uses appropriate coping skills to control anger without adult assistance. We want them to do that. And um, queremos que se controle eh, ese, ese, esos enojos, ese comportamiento, uh, saber cómo controlarlo. So if you look at this handout, it gives you some ideas about how to help your child do that. ¿Cómo es? ¿Cuáles son estas ideas que ayudan a los niños para calmarse? We have to teach them how they can uh, calm down. The child control, controls anger, puede controlar su enojo. So in other words, no tantrums or arbors. When they're two, that's what they do, <laughs> right? When they're, they're, they're toddlers. Cuando están chiquitos, que tienen dos años, se van a enojar, se van a hacer el berrinche. That's just what's going to happen. That's just part of their development. But when they're four and they're still having tantrums, then we need to work with them to show them how to be able to control that. Self-regulation is also interacting and cooperating with peers. Uh, el autocontrol es cooperar e interactuar con los amigos. And you're going to say, well, how is that? Because sometimes you're going to have to play with somebody or be with somebody even though you're mad at that person, right? Because if you don't, then as children, they're not going to be able to play. It's not going to be fun. You're not going to be able to do projects. And so they need to know how to do that. When we do these things with children, cuando hacemos estas cosas con los niños, then we're showing them how to self-regulate. And that's the foundation of knowing how to share. Ese es el cimiento uh, para saber cómo compartir. So, well, and then you go, well, how do I do that? Do I talk to them? Yes. Do I give them examples? Yes. What else can you do? You can pick up a book. Hmm. <laughs> About that particular social skill. ¿Cómo es que lo puedo hacer? Lo puedo compartir con mis niños leyendo. So, what I, what I did is... Um, I just did a search. Let me, let me think about some books that are about sharing. So I found the English version of share and the Spanish version, which is very, comes in very handy. Um, and one of the reasons that I liked this book was because it's about siblings. And the siblings, and, and it's from the point of view of one of the siblings who has to share. So I'm going to just um, read a couple of pages real quick before we get, so that way you can get an idea. I'm going to share the story with you. <laughs> so this is, the book is Share by Anthea Simmons and Georgie Burkett. I love my fluffy teddy, but baby wants him too. Este está en español, si lo quiere seguir. Share, says mommy. So I do. And now my teddy's soggy and stick it up with food. I love my book of animals, but baby wants it too. 
Chair, says mommy. So I do. Now the book's all bendy and the page is sort of glued. Look at that face. Está enojada. I don't think she's too happy there. But what is she doing about it? What can you see? Her body language, so she's able to self-regulate, right? She's not saying, no, she doesn't want to share. But mommy tells her, I love my number puzzles, but baby wants it too. And look at baby, he's crying because he's baby. <laughs> share, says mommy. So I do. And so the book continues talking about you know, um, sharing, but at the end, they, I mean, they, if you look at the illustrations and you see her face, she's like quite had it <clears throat> with baby brother. <laughs> and maybe even with mommy, because she has to keep sharing. Tiene que estar compartiendo con el bebé y no le gusta, pero empiezan a hacer uh, cosas juntos. They start doing things together. So it becomes that interaction, that meaningful interaction between siblings, because they're going to fight. We fight with our siblings, right? But then they're together, see? So we teach them about sharing through books. Um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mary Esther. And uh, anyway, so that's what I wanted to share. There are some other books. I have some books here in Spanish that are about sharing. There's some other ones, like uh, one big pair of underwear. <laughs> the doorbell rang. I don't know what, the librarian over at our central library in San Antonio, kept, she kept bringing me books about sharing, and most of them were about bears. So I don't know if it has something to do that share, bear, they rhyme. Maybe, <laughs> it's rhyming, mean, so you're more than welcome to look at them. So I'll turn it over to Mary Esther. I'm sharing. <laughs> <laughs> because Alex forces it. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, good, good evening. Uh, my part is working on the literacy. And uh, what Mari and I do is work with teachers, get them ready. And I, I just uh, am fascinated by everything that she, all her ideas. And I'm sure she shares that with her, um, her students. My part then is to focus on the alphabet. And in your, your, you do have a handout that says guiding young children through early literacy development. It's English and Spanish, but I'd like to call your attention to the very top sentences. And it says that letter recognition by young children means that they have experience with print. So if, if your three-year-old says, mommy, does, does that say exit up there? because they recognize the E or they are so familiar with their environment. We call them readers. They are part of the reading club already. Um, then the next sentence says, knowing letters is not enough to read. However, it's an important foundation. So the kindergarten teachers are ready to hit the, the floor running with literacy. And there's a great push for literacy. Why do children need to be rushed? There's no need to be rushed. I want to share that in New Zealand, the most literate country in the world, children don't start school till they are seven years old. And there's no rush into literacy. Living here in the United States, we're rushed into literacy. And what Mari and I try to do is say, let's do it in a joyful way. Let's do it in an age-appropriate way. And the age-appropriate way always is play with young children, whether they're two years old, a year old, or even when do you get tired of playing? I like to play, and I'm not telling you my age. <laughs> <laughs> so the next part says, observe, talk, and play. Really, this is the way that we should live with little kids. 
observing, talking, and playing, playing games. So this whole uh, handout, we could go um, quickly through it. I'm not reading it to you directly. And I'm sure that you already do this as the, the toddler is sitting in the, in the back of your car and the passenger seat in the back seat. You say, hey, what do you see over there? Mom, it's McDonald's. Or I see uh, Baskin Robbins, whatever it is that is here in Elgin. And they recognize environmental print because they've seen it so often. Or on the table, they recognize that this carton is milk or orange juice, right? They know the label. They're not reading the label on the bottle, but they know what to name the object. That's the beauty of it. Their brain always wants to make sense of what they see. When they're born into this um, world, it's a chaotic world. They are so dependent on us adults and dependent on care and love. And so that's the procedure that we teach um, our teachers is be joyful, be playful, and do it in a caring way. Kids are inquisitive. So games and playing is the best way to teach the alphabet and a love of reading. So Mari right now was reading that uh, Sherry book and she did it with expression, right? She did the mommy's voice, she did the child's voice. And so reading emphatically and with, with um, feeling and emotion just helps the child understand these emotions when they use it themselves. It's in the book and yet I'm, I'm hearing it, it must be valid. Um, another way to help the children is um, through play is, of course, um, one game is, let's say that the child has a toy monkey, right? Favorite toy monkey, whatever it could be. Um, it could be a doll. And um, you're playing with a word with a, with a sound of D. Doll, 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 right? Uh, and maybe the doll has a, a name. That's one object that um, it could be for a, a little boy, it could be, a, I won't call it a doll, it could be a figure, right? <laughs> but uh, not to be gender biased here, it could be anything. Uh, and you focus on the initial sound of that toy. Welcome back! <laughs> and um, you can play hide and go seek for certain items. I have some, some items here that I'll just display quickly here on the table. And these would be some things that we saw in our very first session when we started our Elgin sessions. And we brought like a bingo game with things that the children will see at school. Um, and so we can work with some of these. And because there's such an overlap with Spanish and English, we can work on it. Um, can, can I have your help over here? Can you help me if you're here? Can you help me? Okay, come and help me. That would be great. Yay, right here. You can get up here, great. Can you show me a pencil? Which one is the pencil when you look up here? Which one is the pencil? Oh, that's a pencil. You know, pencil starts with P, can you show me the marker? Any marker, there's a couple of markers there. Marker, how about paintbrush? Paintbrush, that's a paintbrush. Okay, you pick one of these and you tell me what it is. You say the name. What do you see there? Yeah, you can touch it. What is that? What is that? Hmm. That's a pen, right? Pen. How about this? What is this? Touch it. What is it? A paper. Here's a paper. Here's a pen. And here is a pencil. And a paintbrush. What are these? What are they? They have color, yeah, they paint. 
These are markers. These are paper, pen, pencil, paintbrush, and markers. And that's all that they have to know. We just categorized, we labeled, and she named whatever she could name. No penalty, just playing games. Which one is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Oh, which, which one is it? Which one is it again? This one? Yeah. Yeah, you can keep that. All right, thank you for your help. Here, here, you can keep it. Yeah, keep the marker. Great. Yeah, that was her favorite. So sim just simple things around the house that you can group. It doesn't even have to contrast. It could just be just things that you, she uh, can, can name. And how old is your child? Three. Three. And playing games like this, um, and for dads that use that shave or don't shave, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but if you, if you go to the dollar store, you can get some um, shaving cream that's for a dollar. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just spread it on, on a table or, or just a uh, placemat, and they can draw letters. Mm -hmm. and, and the surface gets clean, and it <laughs> smells really nice. Mm -hmm. um, when you have a book, and now I, I've misplaced my books, Marty, sorry. When you have uh, a book, and um, that's rereading and rereading the books are great because the children become familiar. <clears throat> there they are. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> um, you can read a book and reread a book, and that's the beauty of uh, building literacy as well. You can have the, the child show you their favorite illustration and they can point to different objects and you can find the the word in the printed text and just focus on that not not a whole book of um whole book of objects just one or two at a time for three-year-olds that's enough and this is a very funny book um, this is an unusual book because it's a wordless book and those are very valuable because the children can make up their own story. There's no text to challenge them. They, this is called The Little Red Cat Who Ran Away and Learned His ABCs the Hard Way. <laughs> and so here's The Little Red Cat. And watching our time, runs into a alligator. And there's the letter A. And then he meets a a bear, and there's the B for bear, and runs into a chicken. Right. The most hilarious thing then is that they run into a dragon, but the a the chicken lays an egg, and so the egg sprouts feet, and everybody begins to chase the red. Dog, the red cat through the jungle it just goes through all the the alphabet and it's hilarious and there's a lot of action and, and we could um, exaggerate and say no and when you look at the O you can say look say O oh, and your mouth makes an O as well oh that'll be the first one that they learn <clears throat> and so on. And then um, we found some books here too that have English and Spanish. And so we see a nice distribution of mainly illustrations for young children. And we have the consistency of having letters. And then you do have the English and the Spanish at the bottom. So it's not really heavily printed and that's okay. Keeping it simple, but do you notice also that it has um, the prime colors? So it's very attractive to young children. And, um, and so we have the capital letter and the lowercase letter. So all possibilities. And then Ms. Jamie here from our librarian has a slew of 
ABC books there. So the repeated reading of books and parents might get say not one more time right I don't know if this has happened to you before but with a familiar book if you miss a word they're gonna catch it because it's so memorized I, the thing about memory is that it's a an important facet important factor of reading that's how we learn uh, to read and it's not just rote memorization it's meaningful and that's how uh, we all learned our ABCs a little of that um, what we're going to do now is um, as time it slips away talking about environmental print we have uh, boxes of cereals here and We can use this as, uh, we're going to make uh, treasure boxes for uh, letters when the children come back. But again, this is environmental print, right? We can group them. We can say Fruit Loops and Frosted Flakes. We can say P -p for Pops and the pencil and the paintbrush. We can say A for Apple. We can categorize them. Or we can just say, oh, look here, this, this particular pack has frosted flakes and fruit loops and frosted flakes, so three Fs here, um, and so forth. So um, when the children come back, we're going to use these, pull out the cereal and make these as treasure boxes, and um, the children can select a book and bring it back to you, and we can make um, uh, letters whatever letter they want to do, and they can select their own uh, cereal to keep, of course. So one of the ways to create those treasure boxes, letter treasure boxes, is to use the painter's tape. Mm -hmm. oh. Una de las maneras para hacer las cajitas del tesoro es utilizando las cajas de cereal con el tape para los que son pintores. And so what you do, is you ask your child, what's your favorite letter? Or what letter do you like? If they don't know the name of the letter, then they can point, and right? They can select a book, uh -huh. And they can select a book. So, um, and we may want to use like the thinner, <laughs> the tape, but you can just tear it. It's so easy to tear. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So I can make the letter H if I want to. Right on the box. Right on the, the box. Uh -huh. And so it gives them the opportunity to use their whole body as their, because I see how I'm looking. I have to be using my arms and I have to be using my eyes and I have to be using my fingers. Children need to move all of their small muscles and big muscles. I'm standing up because I can't do it if I'm sitting down. So that's helping me also. And so young children need to be able to move. See, that's my letter H. Eh, pueden hacer una, una letra, la letra favorita, uh, la letra de su nombre, la letra de su apellido, de su mamá, de su papá, de sus hermanitos, utilizando esa cajita uh, como tesoro. The other thing is that you, and I won't open it, but you can, you are going to be able, they're going to be able to open it, take out the cereal. It's up to you if you want them to eat it or not. And so then, everybody's going to get some index cards and they can practice writing whatever letters they want or words. And they can do it on this side or they can do it on this side. Van a practicar cómo escribir letras como ellos quieran, de un lado o del otro donde hay las rayas. And you just let them. And if they don't want to, if they say, no, mami, you do it, then you do it. Okay? Si quieren utilizar otra cosa, pueden utilizar otra cosa. They can do, the, the point is to engage them in that literacy. And even though it's just letters, if we don't know letters, we don't know words. If we don't know words, we don't know sentences. And so we need to help them build. The beauty of the alphabet books is that children can 
immerse themselves in those letters. L lo bonito de los libros del alfabeto es que ellos se pueden meter en el libro y aprender acerca de las letras. And so it's very important that they know the name of the letter and then the sound of the letter. Es importante que sepan el nombre de la letra y el sonido. And of course, in English, it's different than in Spanish, right? And, but that's the beauty too, because they're grow, they're, the children will be learning. Uh, as, to, they're, yeah. as they're coming in, as they're coming in, mm -hmm. I, I'd like for anyone to stand up as, as the children oh, are coming sure. in. Um, maybe mommy and daddy want to uh, make it letter M, I don't know. Or if you're by yourself, or if you're with a team, you can make your own independent letter. So think about what letter you might want to show your child as, as he or she comes in. And maybe they can guess what it is. Come and, come and join your parents. Uh, where's mama? <laughs> Okay. Okay, Marty, you wanna you wanna tell them? No, you go ahead. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Let's. Once, if you can hear my voice. Terrific. Go with mommy and daddy, and Miss Mary Esther is going to give you directions. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I would, okay. So, Mari, uh, will you pass out the. Um, sure. Uh huh. Okay, boys and girls, every, everyone will get a cereal box. Boxes. All sorts of boxes. You can come and get one. And boys and girls, you can come and get one more box of cereal. One more box. Si quieren venir por más cajitas. And so you, you can, can have another one. Treasure boxes. Yeah, make and your you own. Recycle at the same time. Pueden reciclar al mismo tiempo. <laughs> One more, one more suggestion, parents. Una sugerencia más. Okay, so let's see. So you've been writing on your journals. You can have your children write favorite letters in their journals. Check, come to our wonderful, our wonderful <laughs> Elgin oh. Library. Vienen a la biblioteca de Elgin y pueden sacar libros. You can come and check out books, mm -hmm. alphabet books. And you don't have to go through the whole book one night. You can choose a favorite letter. Pueden escoger una sola página y pueden escoger una sola letra. Um, it's important. I see the excitement of the kids. Look how excited they are about letters. Fíjense qué tan emocionados están. But you know why they're so excited? Because you're here and you're mm -hmm. sharing with them. Ellos están muy emocionados porque ustedes están aquí y están compartiendo. You're sharing. Están compartiendo. So there's a lot of different ways that we can share. And there's a lot of different ways that we can show our children this wonderful thing we call we thank you for coming tonight, and we hope that you to see you next time. Uh, Ms. Jamie would be on February. February. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.
So if you have a young child who you want to introduce to the, to the wonderful world of reading, you need to come and join us at these fun and informative sessions the second Tuesday of every month, starting at 5.30 in the afternoon. It's a 90-minute session. Uh, if you'd like to sign up, you have any questions, you can call us at the Eldon Public Library. Our number is 512-281-5678. And remember, it is never too early to teach a child to love to read.